You write in different forms and different lengths. How do you know when you sit down to write something that it's going to be a flash fiction? Oh, that's a fantastic question. I love that. I think one of the things that happens, because I, as you say, I write lots of different forms. I write from six words up to about 75,000. So when I start, I normally have, uh, I'm quite a visual writer. So I have a particular image or idea in mind. And I tend to think how much puff has this got in it? Oh, it's um, it's like a balloon. So you've got the rubber of a balloon and you've got the amount of breath. So you blow into it and a flash will be about a particular size. A short story might have more capacity, but you have to be careful because you don't want to blow so hard with your story, your plot, your characters, that you're going to make it burst and it'll go all over the place. So you have to um, consciously think about how far will this balloon expand? Does it want to be a full length 15,000 word story? Is it a 30,000 word novella? Is it a 75,000 word novel or nonfiction piece? Or does it want only a thousand words of total inspiration and illumination in a flash? And I think balloons are a great analogy here because we all know when we blow up a balloon, how much puff it takes for it to get to a size which is suitable to the amount of rubber in that balloon. And sometimes if you blow harder, you know that you're risking it all going wrong. So that's kind of how I write something. I might have an idea, how big is that balloon going to be? It's usually the two go hand in hand. I have this strong sense of, no, nope, that's too much for this balloon. Wow, thank you. That's an amazing analogy. Um, perhaps you could tell us some of the techniques that work well with flash fiction. Sure. Oh, the techniques. OK, this is really contentious. And I'm aware sometimes when I talk to different groups that they get worried about it because it's like saying there are rules and flash is quite ruleless in lots of ways. But I'm going to give you, if you like, 11 hints, 11 hints. My goodness. The first is that there is a broad consensus that flash is about a thousand words or less. Really short flash is often called a micro. And if it's 100 words, sometimes it's called a drabble. But there's general consensus. Less than 1,000 a a words, we're talking about a flash. Now, a flash might be a short story but not every short story, I would argue, is a flash. It's uh, something called the Raven Paradox, and I love it. Okay, so word length. The second thing is that the form of flash can be quite distinctive. I think probably because it's short, it lends itself to all kinds of things, but the form is, is telling. There's a lot of stuff that goes on off the page as well as on it. The third thing is the role of the title. Titles have to do a lot of work in Flash, perhaps even more than a short story or a novel or a TV show or whatever, because if you've got a thousand words, those few extra words are really valuable. If you've only got a hundred words, they're essential and you have to use them. The fourth thing is Flash is all about compression. The number of characters, the number of events, the emotion and the ratcheting up of tension and the release of that tension. You don't have a lot of time. It feels very intense. It's about compression and then just pushing out to the absolute fullness, but no more than that. I think the fifth thing is that the language really matters. It's tight, it's bright, it's right. The verbs work really hard, the rhythm, the repetition, the balance, the, the whole musicality of it. If you read it out loud, there's something going on there that flows and that creates a particular kind of pace. The sixth thing is the feel of it. There is an, it leaves an after image. I often think that a flash is a bit like taking a photograph with a camera or a phone, ping, it's that brief moment of illumination, 
followed by the gradual fade away and it leaves an after image on the retina. The seventh is the use of imagery and metaphor and trope. And they might be borrowed from fairy tale or folklore or parable or any kind of historical encounter with story that we've had, whether it's the, the, um, the person in the pub who can't tell, stop telling a particular story about the night he met so-and-so, or it's the story that a particular caregiver told to you again and again as a child, or it's something you know from your own community. Stories, tropes, folklore, stitched through a narrative, they can create something that invites the reader in further than they might otherwise go. And this stitching, I mean, that's a great example actually, saying stitched and thread, because sometimes you might use language from a particular thing like sewing, and you might dot and embroider your whole piece with that language in order for it to come together much more effectively than if you use disparate words or verbs or nouns. But if you keep using that sewing imagery, it holds the piece together, which is great because one of the crucial things with a flash is that you have to get the ending right. For example, if you pull all those threads taut at the end, the whole piece thrums and it feels much more beautifully shaped and fulled uh, to continue with the, the fabric metaphor. There's always a plot, something shifts, something happens. The wonderful thing about Flash is that it lends itself to experimentation that longer pieces couldn't stand. You couldn't possibly, well, you could, I suppose, have a second person future tense novel, but a Flash, you can experiment and it invites that and celebrates that and lets you play with words in a way that so many other forms seem to constrain. Whereas flash may be about compression and some people say it's about constraints. I also think it's hugely liberating because it invites us to do different and difficult things. I think that's everything I want to say about flash in a very brief moment. Thank you, Elle. That's brilliant.